Polynomial long division works for dividing any two polynomial functions, but it can be a little bit of a time-consuming process. What we want to introduce then is something called synthetic division, which is essentially a compressed version of polynomial long division. The important thing to keep in mind here is that this process only works when we take a polynomial function f of x divided by something of the form x minus a. So we can only divide by a linear binomial function. If the form of what we're trying to divide by is anything different than that, we turn back to polynomial long division. In example one, we have a polynomial that we're looking to divide by x plus two. To write that in that x minus a form, this means we would be dividing by x minus negative two. So let's look at how this process works. What we'll do is take that value for a, which in this case is negative two, and we'll draw something that looks similar to that division notation we were using before. But under it, we'll only list the coefficients for the polynomial that we're dividing into. So in this case, just seven, negative seven, one, and one. Next, we'll skip a row to leave ourselves some space to work and draw a horizontal bar and drop down this very first coefficient. From there, what we'll do is take our value for a, which in this case is negative two, and multiply it by this value that we just dropped down and move up and to the right in a diagonal pattern. And after multiplying those together, we'll get negative 14. Then what we do is add those two values, which are in a row or in a column to get negative 21 and keep repeating this sort of zigzag pattern. Now we'll take negative 21 times negative two to get positive 42. We'll add those two values together to get 43. And then multiplying again by negative two will give us negative 86. Adding those together will give us negative 85. So that sort of zigzag pattern of multiplying and adding is just a repeated process. Then in terms of our answer, we have this row of numbers. And what we'll do is translate that into our resulting polynomial and our remainder. In this case, we started off with a polynomial of degree three. Our resulting polynomial is always gonna be one degree less than that. So we're gonna have a second degree polynomial function. Moving left to right along that row we constructed, we'll plug in seven as our first coefficient, in this case for x squared, minus 21x plus 43. And then whatever value we have left over at the end there in that bottom right corner will be our remainder. So we end up with exactly the same result that we had in example one using this condensed process, where again what we do is drop down that first coefficient and then continue moving in this diagonal pattern where we multiply by negative two and then add that column together, multiply by negative two, add that column together, and that process just keeps repeating until we reach this bottom right value, which will be our remainder.